Hello everyone, today I don't want to solve any problem, but I thought Pascal triangles is so interesting and I want to go through Pascal triangles feature. Okay, let's go. Pascal triangle is a number triangle that although it's very easy to construct, but it has many interesting patterns and useful properties. Although we name this triangle after the French mathematician Pascal, uh, who studied and published the Pascal Triangle, but it is it was known before it, and it was known to Persian in 12th century and to Chinese on 13th century, and even before Pascal, there were some European mathematicians that uh, find it out during 16th century too. So, in the first step, let's go and see what is the construction of this triangle number. Uh, the construction of the Pascal triangle is very simple. We start with one at top, and uh, each number below this is uh, below this number formed by adding together the two numbers diagonally above it. So, for example, for the next one, uh, we should add zero and one because here we don't have any number. And again, here we don't have any number and it's going to be one plus zero. We'll have one and one here again. And the next row is again, we don't have any number here and we don't have any number here. It's going to be zero plus one, one and one plus one, which is two and one plus one, uh, one plus zero, which is one. And again and again, we continue for construct constructing this uh, triangle again, zero plus one. 1 plus 2, which is 3, 2 plus 1, which is 3, and 1 plus 0. And again, we can go to the next one, which is going to be 1, 1 plus 3, 4, 3 plus 3, 6, and 3 plus 1 is 4, and again, 1 here. And then we will have 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, and 1. We can continue and go on and constructing this triangle. We will have again one here and one here, six, and you can fill these numbers. That's not too much difficult. If we look at the diagonals of Pascal's triangle, we can see some interesting pattern. The outside diagonal is consists of entirely ones. And you can see here too, all of them are one. If we consider that each and number will always have a one and a blank space above it, it is easy to see why this happened. And the second diagonal is natural number in order of one, two, three, four, five, six, and go on. And again here, one, two, three, four, five, six, and go on. Uh, by following the construction pattern of the triangle, it is easy to see why this happens. The third diagonal is where it gets really interesting. We have the numbers as 1, 3, 6, 10, and so on, 15 and 21, and so on, 1, 3, 6, 10, and so on. These are known as the triangle numbers, so-called as these numbers of counters can be arranged into equilateral triangle. Let's see it. Uh, the triangle numbers are formed by each time adding one more than was added to the previous time. So, for example, here we have one and we will add two. We're going to have three. And here we will add three. We will have uh, uh, six and then we will have ten and so on. Another interesting property about Pascal triangle is that if we sum all the number in each row, we will have, for example, one plus one is going to be two. The first row is one, and then it's going to be four. Two plus two is going to be four. And here we will have six plus two is going to be eight. And we will have 14 plus two, 16. And here we will have 20, uh, sorry, 30 plus 2 is going to be 32, and so on. So if you look at these numbers, we can see a pattern. If we notice, 
all of these numbers are 2 to the power 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, and continue. So we can see it here. The summation of each row is 2 to the power the number of the rows. For example, this is row number 0. It's going to be 2 to the power 0. This is row number 1. It's going to be 2 to the power 1. 2, 2 to the power 2, 3, 2 to the power 3, 4, 2 to the power 4, and we can continue. And now I want to say another property about the Pascal triangle. But before going to the next property uh, in this triangle, let's remind the n choose k formula. n choose k is n factorial over k factorial over n minus k factorial. So let's just start by an example. Assume we have n balls and we want to select k of these n balls randomly. So uh, we want to calculate how many ways uh, we can select this k out of n. So there is a famous formula for solving this problem, which is n choose k. By calculating n choose k by this formula, we can find out how many ways are there for selecting k balls out of n balls. For example, we have three balls. We want to select one of them. So there are three possibilities if we calculate by this formula. But if we think outside of the box, we have three balls. So we can choose the first one or the second one or the last one. We don't have anything outside of these possibilities. So we will have three ways to choose one from three balls. So by knowing this formula and choose K, let's go through the triangle again and see what will happen. So let's write one as zero choose zero. Zero choose zero all the time is one. And a zero choose any number all the time is one. So we know uh, one choose zero is one. One choose one is one. Here we have one and one and here it was one. Let's go to the second row. Here we can write the one as two choose zero and the two uh, as uh, two choose one and the one again two choose two. It is one, one and this is two. Now let's go to the third row. We can write one as three choose zero, three as three choose one, again three as three choose two and one as three choose three. So the next row, one as four choose zero, one as four choose four, and four as four choose one, and four as four choose three, and the middle one is six, which is four choose two. We can calculate one of them. For example, four choose two is four factorial over two factorial over four minus two factorial, which is two factorial. And this is going to be 6. So this is interesting. We can see at each row, we have the number of row. And we can write uh, the numbers from 0 to the number of row. And we can find the numbers. So for example, the fourth row is going to be 4 choose 0, 4 choose 1, 4 choose 2, 4 choose 3 and 4 choose 4. So nice. This is interesting. Another interesting property about this Pascal triangle is that we can write binomial expansion from the number in the triangle. For example, x plus y to the power 1. 1 is the number of the row, which is 1 here. So uh, if we write it, it's going to be x plus 1. The coefficient of x is 1, the coefficient of y is 1, 2. So if we take a look at the number here, it's 1 and is 1. Same as the coefficient we have here. So let's go to the next one. The second one is x plus y to the power 2, which is the number of the row. We know this formula. x squared plus 2xy 
plus y squared. If we look at the coefficient, here we have 1, 2, and 1. Actually, there is important thing about writing uh, the coefficient is that we should uh, write it in order. For example, if we start with x squared, after that we should have uh, the power 1 of x, and then we go to the y squared. If we start with the y square again, x we should have we should go to the power of one from y. So here we can see this is our first coefficient, this is our second coefficient, which is two, and the last one is one. So let's go for the cube one. So we will have x three, three x two y, and three x y two plus y three. So if we look at the coefficient, the first one is one. The second one is 3, the third one is 3, which is 3 here, and the last one is 1 again. So great, these are, these are our coefficients for binomial expansion. So we can write any binomial expansion with any power, just uh, look at these numbers in that row in Pascal triangle. So nice, we, we don't need to memorize all of them. And again, we can continue on going on through larger power. So uh, we talked a little about diagonals of Pascal's triangle, but let's go further and uh, see what will happen. So as we said, the first one is all one. This is all one, the blue ones. The green ones is the second one, is all natural numbers. And we talked about the triangle numbers, which is our third one, which is 1, 3, 6, 10, and go on. But uh, we can uh, represent this number in another way. For example, n plus 1 choose 2. Okay, for example, here it's going to be 1, uh, 1 is going to be 2 choose 2, which is 1. 3 is going to be 3 choose 2, 3 and 2 here. And 6 is going to be 4 choose 2, and we can continue and calculate these numbers. The next diagonal is like uh, the third one, but we have 3D triangles number. 1, 4, 10. We can draw 3D triangles and see what number it's going to be. But uh, we can write in other way, which is n plus 2 choose 3. For example, the first one is 3 choose 1. The second one, which is 4, is 4 choose 3. The third one, which is 10, is 5 choose 3. And we can continue. And we can continue and going to the next diagonal and see. Uh, we can change these numbers. It's going to be n plus 3 choose 4. And we can continue on doing this. So another interesting fact about Pascal triangle is that if we write Pascal triangle as left justified, so the, the summation of each diagonal is going to give us uh, Fibonacci numbers. For example, this is going to be 1, this is going to be 1, this is going to be 2, this is going to be 3, the next one is going to be 5, and we can continue. The next one is going to be 8. If you remember, the Fibonacci number starts with 2, 1, and then after that, it's going to be the summation of the last two numbers. For example, the next one is going to be 2. The summation of two ones is going to be 2. The next one is going to be 3. The next one is going to be 5. The next one is going to be 8. And we can continue. So let's go through the Fibonacci sequence again. So this is the diagonal that we draw here. It's going to, the summation is going to be 1. The next one, if we draw the diagonal line, it's going to pass only this one. It's going to be 1. And the third line, if we draw here, it's going to pass these two ones. It's going to be 2. And the next one, if we draw a line, it's going to pass 1 and 2. It's going to be 3. And the next one is going to pass 1, 3, and 1 is going to be 5. And the next one is will pass 1, 4, and 3. It's going to be 
8. And we can continue. And these are known as Fibonacci numbers. And that was it. Thank you for watching us. Uh, actually, there are more properties for Pascal triangle, but I only described this one. If you are interested to knowing other features, please let us know in the comments. Thank you for watching us. I hope you enjoyed our video.